We're heading via Zoom to Perth in WA. Uh, we don't have to worry about borders when you use Zoom. And reaching out to the CEO of Kia Health, his name is Baf Kuka. Uh, Baf, welcome to The Informer. Thank you, and, uh, and uh, have, it's a great day to be here. Now, look, uh, can I just ask you, you've, you've been given some very good news over the last, uh, tw uh, was it 24, 48 hours? You're going to be looking, or having to look after, about 140 oil rigs in Malaysia, is that right? That's correct. Uh, they emailed us uh, just three days ago and said, um, we've, we've located you and uh, it's the standing in the community that we have, our commitment to healthcare and clinical excellence. And uh, we're one of five invitees and, uh, and I believe that we're up there which means that over the next couple of days, uh, my team and I will be working together to ensure that the best possible uh, put from the foot is put forward. Yep. We're putting in an extensive uh, submission and also a video as well. Uh, uh, Beth, that's a tremendous accolade. Uh, you've done, yep. uh, you've had a lifetime in, in uh, the medical practice. You certainly, uh, we can go back and reflect on some of the stories of the past uh, were you there or did you have to attend the, the infamous uh, Milpera massacre in New South Wales many, many years ago in the 80s? Yes, I was. And uh, I was a station officer at the Campsie Ambulance Station at the time. And myself and my, my, my trainee at the time, a lovely lady, uh, we got called to go there. And um, she became quite upset on, on the way because of how things were going. We, hear, we heard all the gunfire in the background and um, and uh, there is honour amongst thieves. The uh, the uh, the uh, the perpetrators of the incident were saying to each other, "Don't shoot at the guys with the white hats on." Yeah. The Ambos. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it was a it was a terrible time. And um, the thing that my fa it affected my family quite deeply because my wife saw this go ahead in real time, and our son, who was only two at the time, said, "Mummy, here's daddy." At this, on the TV, and that's what she saw it all unfold. Yeah. Uh, fast forward, your son's a news director at Channel 7 in, uh, in Perth. Uh, when did you move? Was that one of the catalysts for you guys moving out of New South Wales and, and heading to greener pastures or, or going west? It's just the, it's just the way it was. Uh, my wife and I have been most fortunate to have worked and lived in many country towns and, and cities. And what ended up happening with us, we, uh, we ended up uh, retiring from the, uh, uh, from the ambulance service. I started off a first aid training company and Kia Health eventually. Yep. And we moved over here because there were other daughters here as well and, uh, and to support Ray and his, and his wife and two kids. So it's been a great thing. Been now, a great now the, reason I've gone, uh, the reason I've gone back and did a little bit of history was to give people a sense yep. of the depth of your experience. And, and I want to know, I want to fast forward now. You speak a lot about uh, the, being, there are three key elements to healthcare. Can you give us a That's sense? Right. Can you give us a sense of the three key uh, elements that you speak of? Sure, the first, there are three key, key elements. Yep. Number one is the equity of distribution of healthcare. What do you mean by that? that? Means what that, do you mean? Well, it means that certain areas of, of the state are afforded similar access to specialists uh, that other people are. Yep. What, we do, what we don't want in healthcare is people being isolated because of their, their geographic location. Or their political, that, or their political allegiance. Uh, well, it can be, yeah. it's often done by other matters. <laughs> and you're right. So what we did for, for five years, I was a hospital and community health counselor with New South Wales Health. And that meant uh, I was based out of Ballina, and we uh, we lobbied the government, all the state and federal uh, ministers of health, to have the co-location of services, mm -hmm. which reflected the community's needs and not what was convenient for the health department. I got Does that. Uh, makes yeah. sense. Well, yes, because Ballina is a tremendous place. Uh, it's a bit of paradise. Right. A lot of people go through Ballina on their way to uh, other exotic locations. But I can imagine the traffic that was going through. I can imagine the tr the transient and the uh, the tourists that would be going through. And there were different Absolutely. demands. 
So I can understand this, this equity of distribution. Now, what's the second tier? What's the next uh, key element of the three that we speak of? Equity of access to healthcare. Um, and what ends up happening there, this tends to fall under the radar. You raise the matter about Ballina, yep. fabulous um, spot. We had an Aboriginal community not far from there. And um, when I was on the health board, we put in a, uh, an Indigenous uh, nurse who, who was able to access people. The main thing issue we had there was a uh, uh, lack of uh, medication compliance. They were given all the medication to, to use. They told how to use and showed how to use it, but they didn't. And uh, the nurse went in there. Was that she, primarily she cultural? Was that primarily it was cultural? A cultural issue? Yeah. Exactly. Even though they went far out of the, out of the mainstream town, the uh, the the uh, in terms of um, accessing the healthcare meant that we had we took the initiative and put somebody down there and put a doctor in there uh, three days a week, and it was fabulous. So we took care of of pregnant and pregnant women who had issues with uh, with their diet, the diabetes, hypertension, and the morbidity and the mortality rates of people that dropped dramatically. I can imagine. This I is what I say imagine. about access to and co-location of service. Fantastic. It's this, and the thing is with that, it saved a lot of money. Oh yes, it, it does. It didn't cost any more. Sorry? No, it just means, you're absolutely right, it means you put it where it's best needed and of course doesn't exactly. create any problems, it actually solves problems. Yeah. Now let's go to the third part of this uh, three-part um, um, third part uh, sector when you is, talk about uh, healthcare. Yeah, and about healthcare, that's what we call about um, about the economic cost of healthcare. Okay. Uh, costing has has saved the healthcare system billions of dollars, and it's also meant that procedures have become much more succinct and 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 quicker. Yeah. For example, when I was eleven, I had my my appendectomy. I was in hospital for two weeks. <laughs> now, yeah, it's done that day. Yep. Yeah, and yeah. You're, you're going home again. Yep. So the hotel costs of healthcare are greatly diminished, which means those savings. Are, are able to go and present it to universities so we have good research and good support. And it means that it's driven by the consumer who is the ultimate king of healthcare. Yeah, you also touched on something else. It wasn't only that they cut down the hospital care, or sorry, the, ho the hotel care or the hotel component of the, of the stay. They used yeah. different technology, the diff different techniques. We go, instead of opening an invasive surgery, a lot of it is keyhole now. So I can imagine exactly. there are, you're getting people now, they've had a hip operation, a knee operation, you've got them walking the next day. 20 years yeah. ago, 30 years ago, you stayed in that bed until they were ready to let you out, and that was months. Connery artery graft surgery, cabbage, is done now, you're home in three days. Wow, wow. You know, so that's, that's what's driven it. The cost of services has been a positive downward force on that. Now, I've got one thing before we go. I appreciate you uh, clarifying those three elements of of uh, care that you spoke of, but there's a whole new element, uh, Baff, that really is baffling the community, and that is <laughs> we're using all this new electronic technology, uh, all these all these records of ours that have been that have been protected, that are secure, and now being opened to the uh, to to the um, uh, cyberspace, and of course we have so many. Uh, predators on that space. How do we know? How do we protect? How do we make sure that our patients and their records are kept safe and secure? And yet, when we need them, our doctors and our uh, medical pro professionals can access them as quickly as possible. I think I think there's always an element of cyber risk, no matter what you do. Even the government departments, the U.S. Dependent Defense Department, and all that have been hit by these people. But I think that what you're saying is absolutely incorrect. And unfortunately, a lot of people are shying away from having their access, their records uh, online and stuff like that. So what I'm saying to people is there's an element of risk in healthcare at every opportunity, from the physical part, the yep. mental part, and also the recording part. Having said that, uh, having, uh, uh, having a, a doctor or a nurse or an AMBO have access to your records immediately is a, is is uh, uh, outweighs the risks, so it's a check and balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It I can, have all my stuff online. <laughs> it, it can save your life. You're absolutely right. Uh, Beth, yes, can, can we, 
Let's do this again when we, a little bit later on when we find out how you go with this contract in, in Malaysia because I think there's an awful lot of uh, stuff we can talk about regarding uh, uh, medical care and how people can access it and make sure that if our councils, our, our, our state governments and our federal governments are listening, maybe they can deploy better strategies and deliver better outcomes. Agree? Absolutely. And right. the thing that, that, that my team and I are super impressed about is that here we are, just a, a small you know, pocket of knowledge in, in, in Perth, and a foreign country has chased us because they recognise the, the value that we present in cross-cultural, cross-border issues. Yeah, it's and, wonderful. And there's another element that you neglected to drop because you're, you're too, you're too um, uh, humble, and that, that word is excellence. I've known from, from a long time ago that you're always a specialist in whatever you did, and you, you didn't leave the job until it was finished. None of these half jobs, and I think that carries through to every element in your business, and Thank we you. commend you on that. Wish you every success you. for 2021, and great catching up with you Thank finally, you. Beth. Regards to family. Thank you for the opportunity of getting our, our, our message out there. No worries at we all. We save lives. That's what we do. That's Bloody what people oath. say to me. What do you do? I said, we save lives. What better calling is there? <laughs> the and without people like you, we can't get the information out. Spot on. Thank you so very much. That's Beth Cooker who, from Kia Health in, in Perth, uh, showing us yet again that they might be small, but their reach is incredible. Thank you, Beth. Thank you very much. All Good talking best. to you. Thank you, mate. Thanks, George. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.